everybody. We're down here at a Memphis Barbecue Network contest, and uh, we came down last night. Barbecue Superstars actually opened a booth, but we seen this uh, fun, fun-looking guy over here. Is uh, Mom, Paul's Hillbilly Barbecue, and uh, where are we at today? Dyersburg. Dyersburg, Dyersburg, Dyer Dyersburg, Tennessee. Just about something above Memphis, and uh, 75 miles north of Memphis. Okay, and you was in Memphis May this year, wasn't you? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, how long you been cooking in the barbecue circuits and all that? About seven or eight years. And what's your name? Uh, Bill Armstrong. Okay. And uh, do you cook mostly Memphis Barbecue Network contests or you cook them all? We mostly cook Memphis. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, what, what draws you into cooking for Memphis? What do you like about Memphis Barbecue cooking? Uh, we like the people. The, the people are more laid back than, you know, the other teams. We've, we've tried the KCBS, but we always go back to the Memphis. Well, let's see. What's the categories this weekend? Uh, well, it's, they're cooking hog, shoulder, and ribs. But we're only cooking hog and ribs. So uh, you can, like, uh, place in the top three in either one of those categories and get in the final. Right. Well, uh, uh, I'm going to be following you all weekend. I, I'm going to pick out two teams, and uh, we're going to see uh, how the competition goes, what a Memphis barbecue cook-off is like. Uh, uh, kind of take us through uh, what happens as far as your turn-ins and everything. Uh, well, we start out with a blind box. We have to turn in a blind box, and then we've got three on-site judges. He, every 15 minutes, we've got a judge for three judges. And then, if we final, we've got four final judges. And then, after that, we have to wait, you know, and see what three, there's three finals, so what one of the three wins the first place. Okay, man, I tell you what, uh, so you got to get it ready for the blind box, and then you got to keep it ready in case you final, right. and then you got to be able to, uh, and then when you do the on-site judging, uh, how do you usually handle that? You just tell them about how you cook the meat, or what do you do? Uh, well, what I do is turn it over to John. John, John does the presentation, so I'm gonna let him. I won't let him do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us, tell us a little bit about your presentation. Uh, usually, yes, we'll talk about the grill and uh, what we did, getting our meat ready, and uh, some of the seasonings we use, and. Uh, talk about how long we cooked it uh, basically just what we did start to finish and uh, then we'll present the meat to them and and uh, hopefully it's good enough to get us to the finals okay so nobody knows who won and then you go out to the awards ceremony but you know who final and then uh, tell us what it feels like when you're all well they'll, they'll uh, name one, number one in each category and get you standing up there right right they'll uh, Name each category, uh, either fifth, fourth, or third through first. But once all the three first places are there, then they'll name their uh, grand champion. And uh, yeah, it's something uh, once you get to that grand champion because you know you're out here against a lot of people, and uh, a lot of people. The judges are from everywhere, so you know you know you've done your good, a good job when you you get that grand champion. <laughs> well, let me ask you there, Pop. Uh, 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 you got a lot of meat left over when you cook a whole hog now. What do y'all do with all that meat? Well, we got family. We give it to their family, their kids. Uh, we give it to friends. You know, just whoever comes by. So, so you, we have to get rid of it. We, don't, we can't sell it. You know, we don't have restaurants like a lot of people do. So we just give it away. So you never know. Uh, half of Dyer County might be making a pork sandwich here in just a little while. Yeah, we, we try to make people happy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, uh, I know KCBS is the biggest one right now. Uh, Memphis Barbecue Network started it all off, though. And uh, so we're coming back to the roots of Barbecue Superstars. And uh, I told uh, y'all's president and some of y'all's board members that uh, uh, if I can make enough money to travel, I want to stay on Memphis Barbecue Network until we get y'all some big money, big sponsors in here. Because... Uh, you know, I tell you what, uh, 
uh, you know, nothing against KCBS, but it's really set up more like a little backyard competition where you have four small categories and a little bit of meat. In uh, uh, Memphis Barbecue Network, you got a whole hog. A whole hog, that's barbecue cooking right there, isn't it? We love to cook hog. That's the reason why we're doing it. You got the, you got the loin in the middle that might dry out. You got uh, mixing your hams and your shoulders with the flavor coming, you know, through all the meat. And then you got, uh, uh, and then you got to decide how in the world you're going to uh, inject it and all that. And it's, uh, it's a whole lot of uh, knowledge to it. A lot of work. It really is. But it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Ain't nothing like seeing that big old head sitting up there on the grill, is it? <laughs> okay, well we got the we got the railroad tracks leg. We're gonna let this freight train go here, and uh, we're gonna get out here and have us some fun. I tell you, the best thing about Memphis barbecue is a whole lot of fun. Ain't nobody worried about a whole lot of nothing but having a good time, is it? That's it. We we're all gonna have a good time. That's for sure. <laughs> till in the morning. Till Saturday morning. Yeah. Now tomorrow morning, you get to working on them boxes. It's gonna get. Different. It's gonna get serious, ain't it? <laughs> in the Memphis barbecue, most people there are no secrets. You know, it's just barbecue. Yeah. Just everybody out there cooking, cooking, and cooking it up. Okay, well, uh, when it gets ready to start working on this stuff, we'll be right back with you. How are you doing today? Come on up. How are you doing? You enjoying the barbecue venue I today? Am, are you a backyard barbecuer? I am. Just kind of amateur, and once in a while get your ribs out and try it. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm in the backyard and, and do some uh, grilling out sometimes. Yeah. But you know, I want to tell you about smoking coals and smoking coal sauce. This is a rub, and I want to tell you these guys have won championships in South Carolina several years, and he's now bottled his sauce, and it is so easy. You put your rub on, use your sauce. And it's just a one-man show, and you will look good like you are a professional. But you know what else? Smoke and cold sauce, you can use that on everything. French fries, um, hot dogs, hamburgers, almost like ketchup. It's so good. It's better than ketchup. So I'd encourage you to at least try this. What do you think? You want some of that today? Well, yeah, I'll take, uh, I'll take one of each. Okay, let's do that. How much is it? Um, it's actually for five dollars and um, it may seem like well I'm buying this at a venue how will I get more but you can go to our website and you can always buy more okay, okay. you like it uh -huh. I'm sure you will thank you so much have a great day this cooking contest we're gonna get started with our our band this evening this is the Christy McDonald band they have traveled Pretty good ways away to be with us here tonight. They are direct from Nashville, Tennessee. Curb recording artist and former Nashville Star contestant. Correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, Christy. Third season. I know. Oh, how do you know what season? Which season, John? Third season. And we have Third cur season. We have curly afro. Yes. And she is claiming she had a curly afro. So if you missed Christy on the third season of Nashville Star, then Google and look up. <laughs> She's shaking her head. No, no. <laughs> Without further ado, I would like to introduce the Christy McDonald Band. Take it away.
This is actually the loins that come out of the hog when we trimmed our hog meat okay. right here. So we're cooking this up for supper tonight. You so, got to take a couple butts right there. Is that a pasta butt, right? Uh, yeah, that's a couple butts. We got family coming down, so we're going to have that. We have some barbecue bologna. I don't know a lot of people. Oh, yeah, man. A lot of people uh, don't know what that is, but it's a big chunk of bologna that we'll cook Are up you and just season. Smoking or did you, did you Treat it before putting molasses on it and stuff. Or? Well, we put a rub on it. Oh, and, did you? Yeah. <laughs> we'll put it in there and we'll cook it. And uh, ooh, MBN baby, let's see what they're doing over here. So we're gonna bonus. throw that in there and uh, kind of let that just sit there. So we'll have this loin tonight. We'll have these butts tonight. Of course, you got your hamburger and hot dog and stuff. So. so what got you on the Traeger grill? Uh, what, what's your what well? About you like that? Um, a lot, especially this little Traeger, is uh, show you it's a it's a pellet fed grill. So there's the wood. So we basically that right there will cook all this meat for today. The there's our temperature settings. So the Traeger, it'll feed it in there and keep a pretty constant temperature. That's right. So uh, okay, it's a pretty good little grill. grill. Uh, this is a uh, I forget what model, but <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's basically your home model. And we bring this with us to cook our supper on. Uh, uh, so Brad K's got a Royal Grill. It's the same thing, same yeah. setup, and uh, he'll keep it going all weekend, cooking all yeah, anything we'll, they want to eat. Hey, we'll have this thing. It may not be sitting here. I mean, we'll move it out. But uh, hamburgers, hot dogs, breakfast tomorrow. We'll have a, a, a one-pound uh, chub of sausage. We'll put some rub on it. We'll put it on here. A couple hours. We'll chop it up, and everybody will have it. Let me ask you one question. How bad was the Thai food just then? <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I've been in worse, but it was it was a good one. <laughs> Hopefully, we're over it, so we'll put everything back together and, and, and start again. So. Start again. Hey, this is Daryl from Barbecue Superstars, and we're here with Boar's Night Out. And uh, man, we was down there in Memphis and May with y'all, and we shot your whole hog prep just about. I know you had a few things that secrets and all and how's things been going since Memphis it's going going pretty good uh, we've pretty much placed in every contest we've been since then we've gotten a few thirds and a, a first here and there so we've been really proud of our hogs they've done good and our shoulders have come in real good and we're we actually got a first rib in Virginia last week so we're really we're really happy so we're hoping everything will keep on rolling man that's big now Sours CF Sours uh, Hadn't really had any sponsorship in uh, barbecue competitions that much. And we've got one CF Sours, and we've got some uh, CF Sours uh, rub, I mean, uh, uh, raw ingredients, like we've got the garlic powder, and I want to give you that one right there. And then we've got the onion powder right here. We want to give you that one. And, uh, you know, I just want to send a message to the vice president of CF Sours that I'm working with that uh, uh, these fellas right here are some big-time competition cooks. And we got an hour video of them working on a hog at Memphis and May. And uh, uh, would you be interested in using CF Sours uh, products if they would uh, throw a sponsorship your way? Oh, sure. For most certainly, these are uh, these are definitely in our dry rubs that we make up, and uh, we use all these seasons. So that would be most definitely appreciated. We got a nice platform for for advertising too. I mean, we're we'd definitely be interested in something like that. How many competitions do you reckon you do a year? Uh, we do uh, between 15 and 20 a year. We are one of the top five teams. Actually, as of this weekend, we'll be top four in the in the country. So we try to stay out there as much as we can, stay in front of the judges and. And we're going to do all the big ones. Uh, we got the NBN championship coming up. Uh, they got a big barbecue contest in Tunica. Uh, a lot of big teams will be around. We're hoping to do some noise there. Man, that's big, man. Boar's Night Out. A big time competitor in Memphis and May. Big time competitor down here in Dyersburg, Tennessee. And where y'all headed to next? Uh, our next one is probably going to be either Nashville or Columbus, Mississippi. They got uh, they're both the same weekend. Uh, we actually won the Nashville contest last year with a first place hog, a first place rib, and second place in the shoulder. So we're trying to decide if we want to go there or go somewhere we haven't been and uh, try and get a different trophy. We like to get a lot of different trophies. They got real nice ones around the country. And uh, we're doing a little bit of Kansas City too. So we, we also cook in the Kansas City circuit. We actually did the Hernando cook uh, about a month ago they had down there. And we took a reserve grand in that. 
We had first place, uh, second place brisket, second place in ribs, second place in pork. Our chicken gave us 11th. If it had been a little better, we might have got a grand. Uh, and we actually got first in margarita, so we were real happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the most important category, folks. Yeah. <laughs> got to have a little party because you got to be able to, to bring your sponsors in and, and show their friends uh, a really good time, and, and we are very good at that. Uh, Budweiser in, in our home area, South Haven, Mississippi, they uh, do a little sponsoring with us down there, and, and we can definitely put on a good show for everybody. Man, well, that sounds exciting. I'm really excited about Boar's Night Out, and uh, he's got him some CF Sours. He's going to try it out, and we're going to be spreading the love of CF Sours all over this weekend and hopefully in the future. If you're having trouble with your rub where you're not winning the, the grand because the flavor's just not there, try a little fresh. Try CF Sours. And Okay, we got <laughs> Squeal and the Bee grilling out here, and they got the whole hog. It's like they're getting a little prep going here. And this is NBN, baby. This big time, big league. And he playing around. He's got his ejection right there. We're going to watch him do their work just a little bit. It's overcast, man. Wouldn't it be something if it was 100 degrees out here? <laughs> I'm glad the rain's gone. Yeah, I'm glad the rain's gone now, though, yeah. You reckon it'll get real hot out here tomorrow? Uh, rain's I mean, West Tennessee weather, you gotta love it. It's hot. You can talk
guitar this afternoon. All the way from Atlanta, Georgia. Y'all make some noise for me. So Brandon Gilliard will talk to you a little bit on that bass guitar. All right, go ahead. Come on now. Hey, it's Daryl from Barbecue Superstars. You know, Daryl wouldn't steer you wrong. I'm going to tell you what, I've got some of the best rubs right here that are on the market. Now, friends, smoking coals has been in South Carolina for at least 10 or 15 years. It has won multiple championships. It has really turned the whole market around in South Carolina. If you're out there competing and you're not winning, you're having a tough time pulling that GC in. Instead, you're getting a reserve or a 10th place. Try to get that first place. Get yourself some smoking coals. We also have Little Johnny's Bonafide Rib Rub and Rooster Booster. Little Johnny's Bonafide Rib Rub and Rooster Booster is the best chicken rub in the country. If you're not using Little Johnny's, you're probably not getting there. So make sure you get yourself some Little Johnny's. Now Red Bordner is a NASCAR driver and he's a barbecue competitor. He has been competing for 20 years. This is his championship rub. He just put it on the 
market is called Kickback Cove. Kickback Cove is one of barbecue superstars' top choice. You can get uh, a six ounce for five dollars and a 12.4 ounce for seven dollars. Now, friends, I'm going to tell you, Kickback Cove went down to uh, Columbia Motor Speedway and won first place ribs. And there's only one thing he used, and that was this rub right here. I'm not going to steer you wrong, old barbecue superstar sees them all. Them three rubs right there are three rubs that I truly believe in. And if you go to my website store on barbecue superstars, you'll find them all there. Are y'all having a good time so far? Yes, I've enjoyed myself too.
Nice weather with Tennessee. Yeah. It's just been a little bit of rain the whole time we've been here. Some of them will cook shoulders, some of them will cook hogs, some of them will cook ribs. Yeah, I've been seeing bologna a lot, uh, barbecue bologna. What time's turn in for hog tomorrow? 11 15? Okay. Well, it's only 1 o'clock. You still got what, 22 and a half hours? Yeah. They let it slow cook though. Right. That's another thing. Ain't nobody in the NBN cooking hot and fast, is there? Pretty much can't do that.
so that's cool. Mm -hmm. They're burning. A little bit kind of scorch even though we're going to wipe it off anyway. Make it, make it make it look about like that all the way through. Now folks, I can see some big time spices in that. Usually a, a, a rub's all one color and you can't see nothing, but folks I can see some magic in that stuff. Magic dust. It is. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we're not that far away from Memphis. It seems like something magic happens to barbecue when you're down in this area, don't it? Yes, it does. It's all about Tennessee. It is, man. Tennessee. Good cooking. Nice people. If you can, if you can get up under it. Up under it. Under it. Yeah. Definitely eat that bacon in there. It's pretty. It's pretty. This is our own season that we came up with. It's no store bought stuff. What is that? Hey ladies! Hey! How y'all doing? I'm back to see how y'all have been progressing. Checking it out. We're, we're moving right along. <laughs> so y'all just put it on there like that? Yeah, I have a question. We do. You missed it just with that. Mustard's a binding agent and a whole bed rub on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just little sprinkler right here helps a little bit. It does, don't it? Gets, gets a good moisture. Melt it in there. Yeah. I'm going to let you know what I see out. All right, bubble. I'm going to let bubble do what I do. We're going to do all the hot and real stuff. But we'll be all right.
Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. My sister Denise came with us today. Yeah. Man, that's a pretty hog now. You got her rubbed down, you got her cleaned up. I don't guess it's giving away too much by saying that you put vegetable oil on the outside to try to get that red color. Is that what it is? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> don't tell us which one. I mean, people need to come out here and cook and learn themselves. You know, some stuff, but but it's a certain kind of oil there. <laughs> yeah, I shot oh, that's good, man. Yeah, dude, just come out and play it up. Come on, I shot four of that. That ham is standing up tight. You can tell the meat's tight on it, isn't it? That's clearing up. Yeah. Yo, Robert, what's up? got to throw something in here. I know this might be a little controversial, but the big difference between winning the grand champion on a Weber Smoky Mountain and going to a competition where, by God, you got a <laughs> six foot by a four foot plate down there, you're going to put your competition meat on, isn't it? You got one chance at it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything got to be right. It's got to be right first time around. 
Yeah, that's right. You can't cook 20 pieces of chicken and pick out the best one, can you? <laughs> Wish I was that eight. <laughs> I'll help you put him up on there if you want me to. You can use extra hands. I guess he didn't come over. I guess they can do it. That's up to y'all, though. Okay. Oh. We can get up on the edge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Put your side in. I'll side in. What? I don't think we won't cook yet. No? I'm just going to back my way just a little bit. Okay. 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 Well, has it got a name? Henrietta. Henrietta. Just came to. <laughs> All right, folks, y'all be pulling. No, for... actually, she's going to be Princess Surprise Pig. Okay, Princess <laughs> Surprise Pig. <laughs> That's a little, a little more good or don't it? 
Y'all be pulling for Princess the Prize Pig. Appreciate it, bro. You don't put the full one. Yeah. And then when you do the on-site judging, it won't look. Exactly. Okay. And after about four hours, we'll take that head and completely wrap it to keep it from overcooking, so to keep the color that we want. See, folks, right, they don't just it. turn in the blonde box. Hey, they got presentation I'll, I'll issues too. Back a little bit because that leg is sticking out. My wife, yeah, my wife just a little bit because that leg right there is when they stick out. It's kind of scooped. That'll work. Get you out here. As long as you're not getting this right here, man. Yeah. Let's cook, baby. <laughs> it's done deal now. She's in the coffin. She's in her coffin. It is done. Hey, buddy, how you doing there? I seen you walking around the vent and I just wondered, uh, are you competing? Do you usually do competition barbecue? No, I'm a backyard griller, uh, actually. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, just, you know, um, what people call barbecue, but actually is just throwing it on the grill in the backyard. That's oh, what I do. Okay, and so I'm, you... I'm, I was looking for, you know, ideas to make my stuff taste better. Taste better. Oh, okay. So you don't really know what you're doing at barbecue. You're just getting into it. And yeah, I want to learn. You want to I learn. I how to cook in the backyard. Okay. Well, i tell you what. The first thing you got to do when you do barbecue is you got to start off with good products. And we have got some fantastic products from CF Sour. CF Sour makes all the spices that you can think of. I mean, anything that you need to season, CF Sour makes it best. So, start off and make yourself a rub. You know, the basis of a rub is paprika, garlic powder, and onion powder. And you know, I tell you, when you go to make a rub, always start off with the best so friend that's the best right there what you got to do is put a little paprika put some garlic powder put some onion powder and then you can choose some other sour seasons like clove cumin or celery seed mix it all together put it on the ribs let it set for 15 minutes and then go put it on your grill and I'll tell you what you can't get better than CF sour Patsy, is this your man? Yeah. yeah. Ah! <laughs> Patsy, say hey. Hey. 
you're gonna be on TV. You have to look up. Say hey, Daryl. Hey, Daryl. Now say hey, Daryl, and wave at Daryl. Hey, Daryl. Hey. Daryl loves it. Hi, Bob. Sherry, I won't. I won't come over.
it's gonna take a lot more. Ah, dang, that thing's putting some pressure in there. Now that bone was laying down, the ribs were laying down against the outside wall. I want you to look at it standing straight up now. I've never seen that before. Uh, many as I've seen injected, I've never seen it do that. That is like big time, man. <laughs> Ten Bone Barbecue. How are you doing today? Come on up. How you doing? You enjoying the barbecue venue oh, today? I am, Are you a backyard barbecuer? I am. Just kind of amateur and once in a while get your ribs out and <coughs> try it? Yeah, well, you know, I want to... Backyard and, and do some uh, grilling out sometimes, yeah. But you know, I want to tell you about smoking coals and smoking coal sauce. This is a rub. And I want to tell you, these guys have won championships in South Carolina several years. And he's now bottled his sauce. And it is so easy. You put your rub on, use your sauce, and it's just a one-man show. And you will look good like you are a professional. But you know what else? Smoking cold sauce, you can use that on everything. French fries, um, hot dogs, hamburgers, almost like ketchup. It's so good. It's better than ketchup. So I'd encourage you to at least try this. What do you think? You want some of that today? Well, yeah, I'll take, uh, I'll take one of each. Okay, let's do that. How much is it? Um, it's actually for $5. And um, it may seem like, well, I'm buying this at a venue. How will I get more? But you can go to our website and you can always buy more. Okay? Okay. You like it. Uh -huh. I'm sure you will. Thank you so much. Have a great day.
a lot of prep work that goes in the yeah. NBN right. and stuff. And you go to trimming on the hog, you trim eight shoulders, 15, 18 slabs of ribs. And What contest you gonna try to make it to next? I ain't sure. Uh, I have to look on the MBN website and uh, see what's going on. We're doing a uh, mock presentation after the cooks meeting. That's what he told me. Yeah, I'm all over that. You know, I've been promoting Ten Bones as one of the, well, as the premier uh, barbecue competition team in the country. And uh, much of y'all win in the NBN, NBN cooks, and they'll go and win KCBS and all of them, but KCBS cooks and these other, they can't come in the NBN and win. You know, it's well, you like know, they have to. Last year, you know, we finished out six in the NBN, and we only cooked seven contests. God damn. And, uh, What'd you win a grand in all of them? I mean. Actually, we only won one grand last year. We just had a lot going on with, with uh, you know, leading up to the restaurant. And, you know, everybody was so busy in their personal lives, and this year we just kind of decided to go, you know, at it pretty heavy and, and see the outcome. And we're one of those teams out there. If we win, we win. We lose, we lose. But no matter what, we're gonna have a good time. Right. So we've we've cooked several contests this year. We've been blessed to win five already and finishing the other ones with the double or triple final one and so he was right there with uh yazoo delta q in memphis and may too he was right yeah. there at the final with him yeah they beat us last year in memphis and may we finished second last year too well this is a good fit master she, she's not going to be here this weekend i guess huh no uh, i don't know they haven't been cooking a lot I think she's been promoting her barbecue classes and uh, okay. different things. I, I, she, she told us that she had her sights set on doing some more KCP issues this year. You know, she, she wants to focus on some of that. And she's done very well in the end. Hey, Robert, I, I need to save the time on that camera for the uh, uh, interviews. You know, Back to us, it was only cooking seven contests last year, and it's not like that. that was, we thought that was pretty decent. This year, you know, we, by the luck of our teeth, went out and done what we've done. Man, look at them pretty shows. My goodness. A lot of work. <laughs> Taking a lot of work, a lot of room time. A lot of money. Yeah, that's the thing. It takes a lot of money. Pulling that big cooker right there ain't cheap. Sorry about the Oh, yeah. You know, I'd like to get your fellas' point of view on the, you know, the cost of doing an MBN, you know, because you have to buy pork shoulders. You know, you guys are maxing out and buying the hog and everything. Well, when you do all three categories, and you, including most of your entry fees, depending on where the contest is at and how much entry fee is, but just average entry fee, you're looking at a bare minimum of about $1,800 a contest. You know, that's including your charcoal and your rub and your entry fee. and. Meat. And meat. I mean, that's basically it. So. No travel expenses. Yeah, there's no travel expenses. No. So, you know, it's not like you can get a Weber grill and win a grand. 
you know, you have to have a substantial cooker. You've got well, to buy some substantial meat. I wouldn't meat. say that. Oh, really? I would say you could take a Weber kettle out here and the other week and cook ribs and went on it. Oh, spread. okay. So you I could. think it's all in the in the team and in the person and, okay. and their processes and, and how they build a blind box. And, you know, because, you know, this is a lot like Casey Bess. You build a blind box, and then Casey Bess just over after that. They average all the categories together to get a grand champion. Well, here, when you build a blind box, whether it's all children or rib, you have to get a good score here and a good on-site score in order to make finals. Make that and final. And it's like you're starting all over again. So, and when you do that, I mean, you're separating yourself from a, you know, it's 16 teams out here this weekend, and it's going to be three teams to make it in each category. You're separating yourself from those other teams, saying that you're the best in that category that day to move on to the final round. Mm -hmm. But we're not. We ain't gonna try it on a Weber uh, Weber cooker. No, we're gonna stick with backwoods. <laughs> Mike Mike built some good smokers down there in Dixie, Louisiana. So we're gonna we're gonna stick with them. <laughs> Just the way we we our cooking process, okay. the way that we cook our meat. I mean, we we like a backwoods cooker and and uh, and wouldn't cook on anything else but a backwoods. Look at the results. I tell you what. That pork show is looking good across here. <laughs> well, you know, you see us trimming a lot of this fat off, but you see us leaving, you know, fat like this right here, that fat's going to render off of that. You know, either you pick that piece of meat up and you just be able to scrape that piece of fat off. But that flavoring's still in that there. Flavor's gonna, that flavor's going to still be there with it. That's what you want. You don't want to trim all the fat off or it'll, it'll render down to nothing. Daryl from Barbecue Superstars. We're down here in Dyersburg, Tennessee, and we bought Granville's. Granville's barbecue sauce. It's a fantastic sauce. Now, friends, this, this barbecue sauce has been in existence since 1898, and a lot of people call it liquid rub. You put it on your Boston butts, your ribs, or your brisket. It doesn't matter what you put it on, and uh, the meat will just take in those flavors, and it's just so good. They've got six different flavors. Today we've got gourmet barbecue jam, the mild barbecue, and we've got uh, gourmet barbecue jam, extra spicy. I know they've got a pineapple and a ginger, and we also have an original spicy. And we've got it all on the Barbecue Superstars uh, web store. You can buy cases of each flavor, or you can buy a set of six that has one of each flavor, or we'll do a mix and match. If you want to buy, just buy a whole case and then tell us you want three of each, three of each, three of each, whatever you want, we'll do it. Barbecue Superstars is your location for the best barbecue sauce. Why would you want to buy barbecue sauce on Barbecue Superstars? Because championship barbecue is all we carry. You want the best? Come to Barbecue Superstars. This is Daryl. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, hey everybody, this is Daryl from Barbecue Superstars, and we're down here in Dyersburg, Tennessee at the NBN competition. And wow, wow, Q wow, looked around, and we had uh, Caterpillar sponsoring two teams. And uh, you know, it was in Las Vegas, Budweiser actually sponsored a team. And now for Caterpillar to come across and sponsor teams, we just had to come down and try to find out how all this happened. Uh, hey, what's your name, buddy? Quincy Crab. Okay. Yeah, we uh, we started competition cooking several years ago. We actually got into the cooking doing uh, community events, fundraiser type events. Uh, work out of the Reman facility in Boonville, Mississippi. Have a sister facility in Corinth that has a cook team as well. They just couldn't make it this weekend, but we do events around the area. Also fundraisers. Raised about 13000 last year for community programs like Relay for Life and Angel Trees. Okay. And how about you, buddy? You got a sponsorship too from Caterpillar. Yes, sir. I'm uh, Rusty Fortner, uh, right here in Dyersburg, Tennessee. 
Uh, we have the transmission business unit. We uh, we build about transmissions on about uh, six or seven lines out here. This is our first event, uh, first year out here, so we're all going to uh, learn a little bit and have a lot of fun and hopefully eat some good food. So, Hey, I, I think I see your facility manager here. He might want to step in and say a few words. Uh, Steve Bullard, would you care to join us here? Thanks, Quincy. No problem. Um, I, I just want to say that I'm really proud of these guys. I, I moved up here from the Boonville, uh, the apprentice facility that Quincy's from, and uh, we had a cooking team there, and they were really involved in the community. So got up here. We'd had a cooking team in the past with uh, the Dyersburg facility, and um, these guys got together and wanted to start up a team here. So, so we're out here cooking, having a good time. Like Rusty said, we're going to eat some good food. That's right. You know, uh, you know, if you think about Caterpillar and them big machines and, and being out there, I used to have a demolition company and, you know, you spend a lot of time outside when you work with them big machines and now we're out here cooking outside. So, yep. you know, it would probably be nice on a big job site, get done 7 o'clock at night or 6 o'clock and crank up the grill, cook you some big old barbecue, wouldn't it? Yep. <laughs> Caterpillar and barbecue kind of go together, don't they? That's right. Uh, those machines have AC, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're... Sponsoring, Sours are sponsoring us, and we want to introduce Sours to you fellas. Uh, if your barbecue doesn't win out here this weekend, and you know you're trying to make your uh, sauce or your rub just as fresh and as as great tasting as you can, uh, we want you to consider using Sours. Uh, you know. When you're doing competition barbecue, and hey, you might win five thousand, ten thousand dollars up here, you might want to try sours. Okay, so Daryl Barbecue Superstars, we'll be coming with a whole lot more from Dyersburg, uh, Dyersburg, Tennessee, at the MBN. Thanks a lot, fellas. Yep, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> He's right. Yeah. Okay. I'm curious. Are y'all all first time? First time in her contest? Yeah, this is Kevin O'Sullivan. And that's Ricky Williams. Yeah. We all cook. Uh, here at Pinbone, I've been cooking about 12 years. Kevin's been cooking for about six now. Rick's always cooking longer, and I've been born. But uh, anyway, all jokes aside, when uh, during the presentation, or when you're showing for a judge and whatnot, you know, when you bring them in, anything that they can see, you're getting judged on. So that's a big part of your criteria. I mean, it's, it's not as much as what your, your product is going to be, but it does count for your score. So anything that you see, I mean, we'll have a table laid out here with a tablecloth on it. And of course, there won't be no trash on the ground anywhere. And anything that you can see, like I said, can be judged on. So when we first bring some a judge in the tent, we always, you know, Kevin introduce them or a Rick or somebody and, and bring them in to Mark and uh, we'll uh, go through the host village, we'll introduce everybody and carry on, then we carry everybody up on the cooker. And when we carry everybody up on the cooker, we kind of tell them, uh, like, doing shoulders, you said. Uh, and, and we do all three categories every time, so we have to do this several times in a contest, at least nine times if we don't find it. So, uh, like, we're doing whole hog grits, we come in and we talk to the judge, and we bring them on the cooker, and we tell them what kind of charcoal we cook with, what kind of wood we cook with, how, how big the hog was, what we got it at. And kind of how we prepared it and how we prepared it. And then we bring them on the smoker. Do y'all want to come on the smoker to the hog? Sure. Yeah. Just remember, you got 15 minutes to do all this. Yeah. Hey, you don't, you I'm going to tell, tell a little story on it, too. Since I'm the tall guy, when I'm judging, sometimes I reach up like this when I'm standing there and I put my hand on top of the uh, cooker. Well, the one, in the one case I did, it was a refrigerator. Put the head up on the rig and I pulled back a dirty hand. And I marked the, the guy down, and I told him when I went back, I said, you top of your refrigerator. And I went, man, you're the only tall person here. Nobody else would have seen that. And I really wasn't looking for it, but that's the kind of thing that would come up. Everything like that. And we bring them in, and we tell them about the hog, like what we got from the weight and all this stuff. And then we'll open it up, and we'll show them the hog. You can see that the smoke cleared just a little bit. You know, it all be decorated up real nice and pretty with garnish and everything at. And we'll explain to them how we cook the hog on its back. You know, because we believe a, 
a hog needs to be cooking some juices for the fat to render properly and all that kind of stuff and have good flavor and tenants. And then uh, once you know the judge sees all that, we carry them back to the table and we pull portions of the, this is your shoulder, your loins up under here, and that's your hand. So we'll pull portions of each, bring them to the table and feed it to the judge. I mean, and for some instances, like new judges that hadn't seen a hog before, we can actually, uh, you know, we, we want to know they're getting the ham and know they're getting the loin and know they're getting the shoulder. I mean, it's hard for a lot of people. I mean, if you unless you've been doing this a long time and cooking a lot of hogs, especially, it's easy to trick people on which meat they're eating. But a ham don't have a lot of fat in it, so it's going to be, you know, a little less tender and have a lot more pull to it than the shoulder beef. And pretty much after we, uh, pretty much after we get done doing that, we bring them to the table and we tell them about, uh, you know, the meat and we feed it to them and everything else and we spoon some sauce in their plate and tell them about the sauce and about the rub and everything else. You got 15 minutes to do all that and that's pretty much it. You got to get them out and get ready for the next business. Right. You got any questions? No, sir. I mean, you just want to really sure to cover where you get your meat from, how big a shoulder you're cooking, yeah. you know, what your processes are. I'm not saying give all your secrets because I wouldn't you know, do that. But I would say uh, it, it's a lot of, uh, how do I work this? It's a lot of uh, omnis in a, in a way you can bullshit you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you have to be able to do this. It's kind of like going to the bar and picking up a woman. It's something you got to be able to do. you got to be able to throw that line across there and make them believe it. Even though they may not laugh, they laugh about it. They know it's all part of the presentation. It's all part of presenting you makes it good. Is this your man? Yes. Yeah.
one's hot? I got five. Tell me what, you okay? No way. Because you filled it up. That's what we like to see. Okay. In the box, you know, we got lots of volunteers going. That's good. When you're up here, you We're going to feed them. I still smell like barbecue. Mm -hmm. uh, this morning, I got in the shower, got up, I'm like, I still smell like Oh, yeah. humidity. You know, when you come after the day, it's a kind of good smell. Plus, it helps kind of cover up right. that. Okay. Well, it's it's good. 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 Pork a la mood. Pork a la mood. Hey, this is mild sauce, right? Sauce is mild, not hot, right? Everybody says they're ready for an appearance. Everybody got their appearance scores? Alright, now you can start putting it on your plate and watch out for the red stickers here on the... There's two with red stickers on them and that means they're the hot sauce. Y'all got it? They don't need forks. Oh yeah, put forks in each. I'm sorry, put forks in each one. They don't need forks. Barbecue is a finger food. It is. Mm -hmm. 
Our dress number five. Yeah. Yeah, we need four more. Uh, hold on a minute. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. You're ready. You ready? I'm ready. You ready for dinner, right? Yes, uh, sir. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, now, how should I give this to the good-looking one? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so and I'm so. For the next 15 minutes, you just think of me as your best friend in the whole wide world. All right. Ooh, Welcome. You good. Well, you know I, I'm getting that uh, all kinds, so I'm not as good with dangerous things. Okay, yeah. Well, we missed y'all on the circuit because y'all wish y'all would get a final with that big yellow butt. Well, they went out of business. So oh, they well. quite sold out. Yeah. I'm Bill. Well, hi, Bill. Good to see you again. Yeah, see, I'm John. Hi, John. Yes, now I recognize John. <laughs> we're we're going to see how much you remember. Okay. Well, uh, let me get my things here together. and. Um, I know you gentlemen have been on the circuit cooking before, so would you mind if I just lay that right, right there? And, um, John's going to take care of you there. I'm, I'm in good hands on it. Yes, okay. All right, Sue, step this way. Uh, that's Ma and Paul's Hillbilly Barbecue. That's our team. That's Ma and their call. So uh, a little slim down from what you might have seen in the past, but it's still right on the money. Today we're doing a whole hog, okay, and uh, get our blind box and Really, really happy. We're happy you're here to be able to Well, thank y'all for coming to uh, Dyersburg Cook. Oh, uh, so I want to take you through our process. Okay. Start to finish. Uh, very simple. Uh, this right here is real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But what we have, we have a hopper on each side. We have an auger in there to feed that in. What it does is it allows us to lower the Okay. So what happens is we get a good smoke flash on there, then we can turn the things up, it'll feed it a little faster, and then it's about 220 degrees for the next. Uh, we're on about 24. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're able to control this heat a little better. The efficiency of it and the cost is a little efficient. Picking right now is kind of busy. Mm -hmm. It's kind of costly, aren't they? So instead of burning a lot of charcoal and a lot of wood like we had in the past, we burn basically a couple of new bags right there. Right. So this is what we used to burn in the stick, the smoke, uh -huh. and we burn that up there. It really good. So if you come on, we'll look at the, like I said, that's just the old stick. These pellets. Take the flavor here.
Yeah, we sit down here and talk about some stuff. Yeah, so we fix to get down to what we like to call jacket and smack. I'll do jacket and I'll, I'll listen. Um, what I want to talk about here, I'm going to try this. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Uh, what is that here? Here's our road. This is our hog road. And when you taste this, this is the raw form. It's kind of salty, but mm -hmm. the overall flavor is what I want you to get. That's a big chunk of meat up there. Or it does that salt. So this is a little salt in the raw state. And she goes down and mixes the juices off of that meat. All for it. But that's, that's in the raw uh, Very simple. Salt, pepper, paprika, A woman has her secret. I know. Okay, sauce, made a base sauce. Okay. Uh, being very simple. Uh, and it's a little, it's got a little heat to it, not very much. You know, the tongue feels different. The tongue is very sweet, the sour, and hot. We try to uh, get all that. So we have a meat. When they get this meat, we put all these together. That's, that's what we're at. We uh, get all a mixture of uh, rub, salt, good piece of meat. That's a good, good thing. Sometimes it's an accident because tongues have been known to reach up to that before. They burn the pieces of it. All right, here's our three pieces. This is what I want. We pull out a big chunk of loin, so we want you to be able to look see how tender there's some in there, mm -hmm. so it's cooling down. I'm just going to set it to right. eat what you want to do. Uh, here's the shoulder. This is going to be a, more of a traditional kind of flavor. You know, hopefully. This ham right here, we sweet this ham. Okay. I tell you what, that ham. Look at it, isn't that pretty? Uh, so, it's going to have a little sweet taste in the loin or this uh, shoulder here. But, when you mix it up, it's still going to taste the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, there's our three pieces. And, uh, you know, every piece should be good and moist. It's very happy on the one box. And, like I say, when you mix all this together, Flavor explodes. Flavor explodes. There's a flavor explosion right there. It should be good. It shouldn't be too smoky. It shouldn't be too hot. It shouldn't be too whatever. It should be a good combination. All three of those things right there. That bite you just had right there. Good dogs. So that bite you'll ever have. Damn it. You know, everybody out here soon is you at all. I tell you, today, I tell you, when you look at the ham coming off of everybody else, the center, a little more like that is right there. And like I said, all of it uh, mixed together there. It's a good place. A little smoke coming in there on the shoulder right there. Yeah, I thought yesterday. Our secret is we don't have a secret. No, so, girl, I can't do my best. 
I need something to take home with me today. Um, I thought maybe a hat. Yeah, man, have we got it. We've got visors. We've got hats. <laughs> We've got shirts. Wow, what sizes do they go to? Man, we got small for kids all the way to 5X. Mm. So if you're a big one, no problem. <laughs> We've got uh, aprons. If you're going to the game this weekend and you need something to put your beer in, we got. And you know what they all say on them? Barbecue superstars. Barbecue superstars, baby. Well, I think I'm going to take a hat. If you if you go ahead and get the hat, ten dollars, we're going to give you a free bottle of smoking coals. Oh, that's awesome! Thank Smo you so much. Have a good day.
Oh man.
way. Give away Chuck yeah. Abel Warner's cards. <laughs> oh, there's Chuck Abel Warner. Welcome to Dinosburg, everybody. Uh, we want to thank all of y'all for coming up here and being bright and early this morning. Uh, how many locals have we got? Double less than 15 minutes or 20 minutes. So <clears throat> we appreciate all of y'all uh, coming up this morning, making the trip, getting here early. Uh, a couple things. One thing, you know, we want you to enjoy yourself. Uh, see, everybody's got goodie bags and stuff, and inside your goodie bags are pencils. Something you use to dry food. We've got 17 teams. <clears throat> we got five hogs. We've got 11 shoulders and 15 ribs. Uh, pretty much everybody's judging ribs. So that means everybody needs to stay. I'll read out the hogs in a minute, and uh, and then the shoulders, and I'll give you the time to go along with it. Okay. There are not any judges, assistants, or judges, ambassadors, but there are a couple of ladies that will kind of be assisting. Uh, either Kelly, Henry, or I'll be outside if there's a problem for y'all to find us. Everybody, I think, knows Kelly here, and Henry, her other half. I didn't say better half, did Other half is back behind the green curtain there. Uh, make sure that you check your cards for confidence. We've got a couple of people here that are on teams and some helping and stuff. So make sure that if you've got any confidence with the people that you're judging, that you let us know. Don't swap cards with another judge. Come see us and we'll take care of it for you. Look at the order they're in. One, two, three. You know what to do. How many training judges we got? Ooh, that's good. That's good. It'll be a good experience for you today. Uh, check your team name and area first. Then introduce yourself when you walk in. And what I normally do when I'm judging is I'll walk up and I'll kind of look at where my next, for where my, where I'm ready to go and sit and look. Catch their eyes and say, when you're ready, I'm ready. Yeah. And then they'll tell you if they're ready or not, or say, give me two minutes and so forth. So just kind of work with them. And then when they say we're ready, you know, look, kind of make a note on your watch when you start. And then check your cards, make sure it's the right place, and then tear it off, introduce yourself and tear it off and give them the judge's evaluation form stuff. Uh, when you're in the site, 10 minutes minimum, 15 minutes maximum, so you'll have five minutes to get to your next team, which leads me to <coughs> no site maps. Now, it's, it's small enough you can walk around the whole thing in about three minutes. And that's if you're slow. So, but I'll, I'll kind of tell you, it's laid out in a circle. Okay? And if you start down here at this end and go to the far side is Red Hot Smokers. And Red Hot Smokers is number one. So you can kind of get an idea from that. Now, the team area numbers, everybody has a team sign on a white placard in front of them. And I try to go by and put a magic marker and put their name on it. I mean, put their number on it. But uh, you shouldn't get lost. One, two, three, four. Now, when you get up into the 15, 16, and 17, they're on the inside on this end. And Shirt Shack, which is going to have a big sign up there, they entered late yesterday, does not have a white placard. They're the only one. And they're team number 17. So if you got any questions, we'll be out there to direct you. But it's, without a map, I just want to kind of orient you. And then you'll have about, uh, there's, there's only five hogs, so most of you won't be judging hogs. So you can go out and kind of orient yourself if you want to. Okay, uh, courtesy. The courtesy items are, don't take any guests in with you. you know, uh, I'm picking on you back there, aren't you? They can hang around here if you want to. I hear you. All right, uh, don't take any guests. 
I lost my spot. No cameras. They don't want you taking pictures of their stuff. No sunglasses when you're talking to them. Now, if you've got glasses that are your prescription glasses and they turn dark, you know, they, they understand that because we can't be without that. Make sure you silence your cell phones so that they won't be distracting to them and your papers, etc. How many people use papers nowadays? All right, make sure that there's no personal agenda here. Again, like I said, there's so many people associated with teams, and we all know teams. So make sure that you don't have a personal agenda. Make sure that you can judge fair today. If you can't, just let us know. We'll be okay. And just let us know if there's any questions. If they offer you a gift to take with you, tell them you'll come back and get it. All right, of course, we know no alcohol yet. And make sure that, as I said, it's independent judging. You are the judge. Now, I'm going to go a little bit off of the briefing now and tell you there are a lot of local teams up here. There are a lot of people that are scared of this that they've never done on site. They're scared of you more than you're scared of them. And I remember my first judging contest. First contest of judge, and I walked up to the team, and I was scared to death, and I'm a judge, so I walked up there, and they said, Hi, this is our first contest. Will you tell us what to do? And I was, that's a good way to start. But anyway, there's a <laughs> lot of local teams up here, and <clears throat> ask them questions if they don't tell you what you need, but try to realize that they're local in their beginning, and we want to encourage them to get into this. So as you're giving them scores for the presentation, just remember that. So help them all you can, and then after you're through judging, you go back and talk to them again. I told them that I would talk to y'all about going back and talking to them again and tell them what you think. Um, judge only the teams that are here today and what they cook today. Not what you had before, not what you had last night, just what you had today. Yeah. Judging starts your time, your 15 minutes starts when they greet you. If there's another judge in the area, wait for him to leave and then work it out with the team when you can go in. If a team drops out, which we've had one team drop out, wait for your allotted time and go to your next team. But don't go right then to your next team and watch and do the presentation to the judge before you. It might uh, cloud your judgment. Do not visit the teams while the judges are out. And especially not during the finals. Especially the final stage. All right, for whole law. See the whole, well, for everybody, you need to see the whole cut of meat on the grill. And I think that might be one thing that the new teams, we tried to tell them that yesterday in the cook's meeting. And remember that you do not have the right to say, I want that. Because they've staged these these pieces of meat and they know what they're ready for and so they may offer you and if they say if you want to make your selection yes go ahead but don't insist on a piece of meat because it may be undercooked and it may be overcooked so let them select a piece of meat for you for hog only during on-site and final judging the team must serve at least portions of the ham the shoulder and the loin now if you're on-site they serve you additional Bacon and stuff, that's just a benefit. But you've got to have the hound, the shoulder, and the loin. All of this needs to be done within the 15 minute time. Other sections of the hog can be served, but they cannot be judged. Just the hound, the shoulder, and the loin. We'll talk about hog blind judging in a minute when I talk to the hog blind. Back right here's the blind judging area. That's off limits to only the blind judging. We will bring some samples out, but I think everybody's going to get plenty today. I think everybody's going to get plenty. So I don't know why you didn't want some samples, but we'll, we'll, do, we'll take care of that. Don't take food from the blind judging or the judge's hospitality area. Don't ask a team for it to go back. They may offer you and you can come back and get it, but don't ask them. And please don't smoke until you finish judging. How many smokers? Okay, I think. That's good. That's pretty good. Only 
got one in here. All right. Today we're judging on the same criteria, area and personal appearance. We've got had good weather. It rained a little bit yesterday. Now I noticed that the grass is a little bit high and some of the teams were talking about cutting the grass. I said, I'll just tell you, I'll the grass is just a little bit high, don't worry about it. I told them to get the beer can tops out of there. So just so you make sure the area is clean and neat, that you would eat there. Don't worry about how much money they spent on their rig. Just is this clean and neat area. Presentation. Verbal information as it relates to the team. Verbal information as it relates to the meat. How they prepared it. How they cooked it. What temperature. That's the questions you need to get from them. If they're new and they don't know to give you all that information, ask them what kind of wood they used for the smoke. Ask them how they inject it. Ask them how long they cook it. They should tell you this. And we tried to tell them yesterday about all of this. But if they don't give you that information and they're a new team, just take that into consideration. Appearance of the entry. How does it look on the cooker? And how does it look to you as it's presented to you? Is it appetizing? Remember, the garnish on the grill should not be judged. The garnish on the grill should not be judged. Tenderness of entry. How does it pull? How tender is it? Is it mushy? You know, and then the flavor of the entry is the meat and the sauce together. You got to judge that together if the sauce is served with the meat. You cannot judge the meat independently of the sauce. Choose the sauce that best complements the meat if there's sauce on the table. Sauce is not required to be served to the judge. And I was talking to a team last night. And they use sauce, but they only use it as their finishing glaze. And they said, do we need to set that out on the table? I said, no. You can tell the judge that you use the finishing glaze. And if they want some, they can taste the flavor. It's not to be judged with the meat. And that's the difference. All right. You got numbers on your scorecards. Everybody's seen the scorecard because everybody's been through class. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that it's, it's our job to keep this level with other contests. So, if you judge a team today, that means they showed up. So that means they get a six. That's the lowest score we need to see on a card unless there's a, a major problem. And if it's something below a six, we're going to ask you why you scored below a six. Seven. That means it's not edible, it's a spitter. Okay? You got the food in your mouth, but it wasn't edible. I had some of that last night. But it was not, huh? That was last night. That didn't count today. Uh, number eight, is it edible? If it's edible, you got it in your mouth, you're able to swallow it, they get an eight. Okay, so most people are going to get an eight or higher. Nine is very good, and ten is terrific. And that means you want seconds. Overall impression now is, is not an average. Remember, overall impression is not an average, and you use a decimal 10.0, 9.9, 9.8, and so forth. If you circle all the numbers except for your overall impression, and you write in your decimal point. All right, scoring criteria. We start with tens. Everybody today has a ten out there right now while we're sitting in here. Remember, ten is not perfect. Ten is the best that you had today. Ten is not compared to what you had last week, last contest, last night. Ten is the best you had today. And we start from ten and go down. We don't start the middle and go up. Ten and down. You must have at least one ten in each criteria. So that means you've got a, a 10 in area of personal appearance, you've got a 10 in presentation, 10 in every area on the car. Now, to say it has to be for the same team. But then you can't have multiple 10s on the car. So don't be afraid to give 10s. But make sure that if you give a lot of 10s that you can differentiate between it. If I've got two cards up here that have all 10s and a 10 and a 9.9. .9. Like a note on the back of the card or something, 
so that I can flip it over and look at it. Let's say that you've got team A and team B, and they're the best that you've had, and you can't think of how to break it. Once you think how you're going to make that decimal point break in there, just write the answer on the back, or the reason on the back, just a short note, so that we know what's going on. If you score below a 7 or 6 in that area, make a note why you did. Now, before you circle all of this, for all of you season judges, I think you know we use the tick system, and I know we talk about it in class, but I make ticks in my little square as to what I think and how they relate so that when I go back to mark my scorecards, I can see my ticks and what I thought about. So we use the tick system. Now, we should, when you turn the cards in, which we're going to turn the cards in right here, we should be able to pick up one of your cards and see a, a winner on your card. Okay, we should be able to determine this is the one that you said is the winner. Okay. Where and when do we meet for judging? Where? Here. Line judging is back here. The teams are out there. Okay, when? Okay, whole hog is the first category. The judging time is at 10 o'clock. We'll leave here about 10 till to give you a, an opportunity to get out. Ma'am? Yeah, don't go anywhere. Now, some of y'all have back-to-back -back categories. You might have an on-site and you might have a <coughs> which means I'm going to go ahead and give out all of everybody's assignments so that you know if you've got to be back up here. Okay? Because you may have to hustle back on your, after your last team. Now, we have a, we have a little bit of wind and we'll know that if you, we know who the back-to-backs are so that if you're missing, you know, just get up here and make sure you get your cards turned in. All right. Um, shoulders are at 11.15. Okay. Be back here at 10.55. 20 minutes ahead of time. Ribs are at 12.30. Be back here at 12.10. Okay. Turn in cards here. Be back here. So, Kelly, is this ready for me? Not. I'll read the hogs out. Well. Go back to the team, and then when you go back to the team, they figure out how these 
thanked the court, and they pretty much know who gave them what. So, uh, um, and, the, and the other thing is, they're going to judge you too. Yeah. Please make your cards make sure they're in order. And when you greet them, if you hand them that torn preparation on there, and you say, hi, you know, my name is Fran, and you hand them that, just keeping in mind, they're judging you, and they, and we look at those. So, um, you know, not to scare you, but you haven't been out there. Well, it helps us know, if, like, you know, especially if we've got a problem that's inherent to one particular judge, and we can go back and talk to the judge and say, you know, is there an understanding here of this, this, and this, and kind of bring the judge up, you know, and, and help them without, it's not a ridicule, it's just to help us, help you. And, uh, and the other thing is, uh, um, remember, this is their 15 minutes, not yours. Whether, I don't know, y'all some of them maybe on clean here or, or, you know, a really good thing, but they don't want to know how you cook your rib or how you do yours. This is their 15 minutes. So you're there too. The other thing, I know it's really sunny out, and we all have our glasses on, but when you walk into the team, I ask them to take them off because they want to know that you're making eye contact, and you know, I wear them all the time. But just kind of curious, take them off so that you can look at them in the eye, and they know you're interacting with this. When they got the dark glasses, they don't know. You're looking at your feet, so it's just kind of curious. All right, I'm going to read this. There's, there's a couple of judges on our here. So we may make some last minute changes. But I'm going to give you your assignment so you kind of get an idea of where we're going today. And again, there may be some changes, so don't go too far away because I had just enough judges to do the ribs. And thanks to one particular judge, she came today just so I would have you know. So. All right, so here we go. Listen up. Hog on site. Sheila Barton. Here. Ryan Vine. Here. Sue Dorsett. Here. David Luckadoo. Here. Pat Austin. Oh, that's the one. All right. Blind Hog, which will be right back here. Brenda Austin. Hoyt Liggins. Trip Spear. Trip. So, okay, listen up for shoulders, on site, Chuck Austin, Johnny Brandon, Brent Ashley, Joey Russell, Veronica, KJ, Lynn, Mike Draper, Tim, Ashley, Chuck. Table one, we'll go over this again, but table one, shoulder, Bedford, Sorrel, Fran, Andrea, Douglas McLaren. Andrea, we're going to move you, we're going to have to move you to the other table so that you, y'all two, won't be on the same table. Uh, table two, Brad Melton, Here. Steve LaFord, Here. and Shane Draper. Okay. Now we're talking about ribs. Bedford, this is on site ribs. Bedford and Fran, Angela Denton, yep. Andrea. How did you say last night? The clerk? Okay. Shane Draper. Trip, Douglas McLaren. Okay. Sheila Martin, yeah. Steve LaForce, okay. yeah. Rancho, Boyd Liggins, Sue Dorsett, yeah. Veronica Larson, Chuck yeah. Water, Brian Bond, <coughs> and a missing judge. Rib table one, blind, Lynn Hogan, Mike Draper, Brenda Austin, KJ. Table two, Joey Russell, David Luckadoo, Brad yeah. Melton, yeah. Johnny Brandon. Tim Ashley is table three, Chuck Austin, Sue Austin, and Brent Ashley. Okay, so that's where it stands right now. 
We're going to go out of here at 9.50 for Hall. What are your times in the other one? Hmm? What are your times in the other categories? Okay. Go over it again. If I, all right. We're going out of here 10 minutes ahead of this category time. The category time is 10. For hogs, 11.15. For shoulders, 12.30. For ribs. You know if you've got a back-to-back, -back, if you think you've got a problem and you can't make it back, just let me know. And if the Austins don't show up, we're going to have to do some juggling in the herd. So, now, there's, like, Fran, Fran, stand up, show me your name tag. Model, Model Fran. Why don't y'all come up here and do a big name so that they can see who you are, because I know they can't, they don't read these very good. So here's a big pen, and here's some name badges, and... We'll get started in about uh, 15 minutes. Okay. Um, train judges, if you've got this, wait until you've done your category, but please have a good investor, someone like me or Cricket, sign on the back. You know, you know, we need to sit on You can run on the back of this contest today. How are you today? I'm doing good. It's hot out here in Dryersburg, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Hey, we're up here at Barbecue Superstars, and what are you looking for today? Well, I'm looking for uh, barbecue sauce. Let's see, you got some stuff over here. What you got? Well, we got some molasses, and now this is um, Sand Mountain's famous uh, syrup molasses. And I want to tell you, if you put brown sugar in barbecue sauce, and most people do, they're doing the wrong thing. This molasses um, just adds something great to it, and you got to try it and uh, see if it doesn't bump it up a notch. You know what else? Um, adding vodka to it or Jack Daniels or that alcohol flavor just brings it out, puts a sip into it. And I tell you, um, your family will not believe the difference. I think you'd like to try it. And this is $5 today, but we have it available on our website. So say you try this jar, um, you can go on our website and buy more if you want it. And I'm going to tell you, there's nothing better than Sand Mountain's famous molasses. You'll love it. You want to interested okay, in that? I'll try, I'll try that. Okay. Try get that for you. Anything else today? Uh, no. Uh, well, yeah, we got a bottle of water. Yeah, I sure ah. do. It is. Let me get that for you. Listen, you have an awesome day from Barbecue Superstars. Thank you. Welcome to Wild Boar Smoke. I didn't want to come on in. Cool, cool. Well, come on in. Get out there. Get out of here. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is talking about cooking whole hog, championship whole hog. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you over to the cooker. I'm going to get a little bit about the cooker. I'm going to show you our hog. And since I'm home alone today, my, my help, you know, uh, did Oh, because they have gone on you. Really, so i got to do the whole thing, you know. But anyway, we're, we're going to make it through here, okay. Uh, but, but what I'm going to do as we're talking, I'm going to be pulling the meat for you. I'm going to you, let you see that you as I pull it. So, you know, you'll be sure that it comes off of this hog. Well, I have a, have a, a sly hog back there that you can reach behind it. It's a slide of hanging. A hidden hog. Mm -hmm. But now our cooker is six foot long, uh, four foot diameter. Uh, two smokestacks on the top to kind of pull the, the air through the cooker. Uh, it's loaded at the far end. We have a water pan that runs the length of the hog that helps add moisture uh, to that. We don't add anything to water. So we put this onions in there to give it a nice oniony type flavor. It's yes, really okay. nice. Uh, and uh, here, here's our hog. Uh, it's a 126 pound hog. And what we do, Sue, is that uh, we, we trim out our spare ribs. These are the baby backs here, these uh -huh. are the spare. And we trim those out so that our uh, sauces and rubs will penetrate into the meat better. Okay. okay. It gets to your loin meat, to see your hams, and into your shoulders. Uh, we, we split it down the center so that it opens out wide. Uh, we also trim all the area out here you know, on the shoulder area. And of course, this, this is the picnic part of the, of the shoulder. Uh -huh. This up here is the butt part. Everybody thinks the butt should be back there, but that's not, you know. Actually, <laughs> what, they, what they used to do is the, uh, uh, in Boston, they would pack shoulders and hams in these casks, and they called them butts. 
Uh huh. So that's why. And that's how it's done. Well, that's good to know. I've learned something new. I did my Google to find it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull some meat for you. Okay. Pull some meat as you can see, the loin here turned out really nice. You can kind of see all the juices that are in there right now. I'm going to slice you off a nice piece of that. So do you inject? I do, I do. Um, so I'm going to chew on meat. And uh, yeah, actually the, the way we prepare the hog is uh, we inject it and then, and then we do a rub and then we use what's called a mustard slather where we actually uh, take mustard and rub over the meat. Uh -huh. Then we come back and sprinkle it again with the, with the rub. Uh -huh. And that mustard gets to build a nice bark you know, that you see right here. And I'm going to slice you off some of this. Okay. To give you a little bit of that. Get some of the juices down here. It'll be really good. So how long are you cooking this bad boy? About 22 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, put that the there. Some, some, some good ham meat down here. Uh, you know, we, we cook it low and slow, so we cook about, about 225 uh, for, you know, about 20 to 22 hours. It depends on, the, you know, obviously on the, on the weather. Uh, you know, I'm going to get you some of this nice bacon here. Yes, let's don't. Forget the bacon. I mean, we gotta have some of that. Well, I guess that's how bringing home the bacon, you know. It's like, who wants to talk about, let's bring home the greens, or let's bring home the beans. No, no, let's no, bring no. home the bacon. That's it. That's it. The good stuff. Well, now, you are going to cook in Covington, aren't you? Yes, we are. Oh, good. Yeah. Now, you're from Tipton County? I, I where, where do you live? Uh, I'm on Colbreth Road. Okay. Well, I'm on Country Lake Drive out there, uh, past the Country Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be the first road off of Burnett Lane back to the left. Yeah, well, we're neighbors, you know. We're just yeah. down, down the road. Hauling distance. Okay. okay. Bless your heart. You need it pointed totally on you. I don't know. No, that's okay. I'm trying to use this towel to wipe you down some, you know. So. But here's some, some, some water. Put some, put some ice in there for you. Okay. Uh, now, when we talk about you know, how it's cooked and the time mm -hmm. and everything, you know, one, one thing we do is that um, the types of fuels that we use, soup, uh, for our flavoring, we use uh, peach wood, okay. and we also use hickory. Of course, hickory is a real overpowering type of wood. Uh -huh. real, real strong. Good flavor, though. But the peach is a real sweet wood, so that helps offset the harshness of the hickory. Uh -huh. right. And then we use a combination of uh, 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 hardwood, you know, lump charcoal, uh -huh. as well as the natural pressed briquettes. Now, what happens in the cooking process is that pork stops accepting smoke at 140 degrees internal temperature. Won't take on any more smoke. Mm -hmm. So at that point, we stop with the wood and start using the charcoal. Okay? And because uh, you're just wasting the wood, you know, I mean, you use it for heat, but we're trying to go green. Uh -huh, right. So we're trying right. to save the trees, as I say. Uh -huh. uh, so that, that's you know, that's kind of the process there as far as the cooking. Uh, and of course, you know, today we talk about how we go from the hog on the hoof, you can see here, to the, you know, the finished product that you mm -hmm. see on the, on the, on the, on the Time of cooking, we've already talked about that. Uh, the types of woods, we've covered that already. Uh, the type of hog, you know, is um, uh, got from from wheat teas, fine swine, or from there, all the small, small, you know, small hog, but nice flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, they use a little bit different breed, but so it has a nice marble. First preparation, we pick the meat up from, from the producer. Uh, we trim it out. Uh, after we trim it out, uh, we check it as we got there. We put the rub on there. We come back with a mustard slather. Mm -hmm. Rub the mustard in, and we rub again. That creates a nice crust of bark that you see up there. You know, uh, we also, as I showed you, we, we trim out between the, uh, the ribs, between the spare ribs and the baby bones. If you feel like that gives the area flavor and juices to them things you need. Of course, the loins are hard areas to keep moist, so you know, that, that helps that area very moist. Uh, 
cook it, you know, 22 hours, you know, cook the deli side up. But here again, you know, the deli side, we think it's just like a pod, you know, that holds those juices inside there. And you can see how juicy it was when you pull it out. That's awesome. Cook it, you know. I mean, it is, I need to be alone that great. Okay. Uh, as far as a rub, you know, what we use in the rub, which is, you know, there's some up in there. Uh, we use a little tele cherry pepper, which is uh, this pepper comes from India. Uh, it's, a, you know, imported, uh, nice flavor and real, real intense flavor. We use the white pepper, which actually comes from the inside husk of the black pepper. And so, if you're going to get Foxworthy and they ask you where does white pepper come from, you can say, well, that comes from the inside husk of the black pepper. Well, so, I like to learn something new now. Learn something new. You do. You got it. You got it. Uh, and then we use a little bit of chipotle, which is sm smoked jalapeno, so that smoky flavor. You know, we're trying to build that flavor profile for the entire process. And of course, for the coloration there, so we use this hot berry paprika. It's not real spicy, but it has a little bit of kick. It gives it a nice ruby red color to the sauce. So, so that's summer ingredients in a row. Uh, our sauces, uh, you know, of course, the dry rub. Uh, we have the, the wet rub marinade, which is what I showed you, the, the mustard slather. Dry rub, mm -hmm. that's called a wet rub marinade. Uh, injection sauce, combination of alpha juices and vinegars and sugars in some of our rub. Uh, we also have you know, the muffin sauce, we use vinegar based sauce. A couple pounds during the process, we baste it and end up keeping more inside. Uh, finishing sauce and glaze, you know, pretty color you see on the, on the skin, nice mahogany color uh, that comes from the glaze. What's the final thing sauce is the table sauce we have in front of you. And uh, you know, kind of compliments. You know, use a little bit of a rug in that sauce also to kind of compliments. So, uh, a little bit of anatomy of the pork shoulder. And I showed you, you know, the, you know the, the picnic portion there and of course the butt portion which runs mm -hmm. up to the, the very you know the center of the hall. Uh, but the nice meat comes from the top the top part there. Uh, and of course the grill if you were showing the scale of the you will cut right across that section. Uh -huh. some, some of people like to see where, you know, you see it on there, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. smoke ring, you know, you hit a nice smoke ring there on a couple of those pieces, so uh, that just comes from the nitrogen dioxide combusting inside the cooker with the fuel, the hickory woods, and the hickory woods also. And uh, it's just a natural process from the moisture, they all combine it. You know, mm -hmm. Of course, too, what makes a check keep all? Of course, first thing is appearance. You know, how does it look on the Is it advertising? You know, it looks look very shiny and bright. You know, it has a nice scent to it, you know, the flavor and the most chemicals. Uh, as far as it's a, you know, the pork flavor doesn't have pork flavor. Hopefully, it tastes like chicken. Uh, no, it does it, not. All right, good, good, good. And of course, you know, the flavor profile, you know, can you taste where the injection got into the meat, you know, where the smoke? flavor cooked into the meat uh -huh. and then the whole process kind of comes together. And what you end up with soon is because it's a balance of the whole process. You know, the preparation, uh -huh. you know, the mustard slather, the rub, the injection, uh, the base in and then uh -huh. the glaze. And, would you see that? So uh -huh. kind of, kind of, yeah. you know, your end product is more than just the sum of its parts. You know, that's, that's an awesome call. Delish. Right. Um, I, you know, I, I, I'm really preaching uh, getting more young people, and I say young people. I used to think of myself as one of those young people, but, you know, introducing this to younger generations so that, you know, the fine art of our cooking is involved. Right, right. Well, that young man that helps me, he's, uh, he, he's only 16. His parents are good friends of mine. You know? mm -hmm. he, could, he, he got hurt playing football, so he couldn't be here. Where'd he go to the high school? Oh, Olive Branch. Oh, oh okay. Right. okay. He may have been, he, he, he's been most of the cook-offs with him. Were you at my school? Uh, no. no. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Up, up in Arkansas. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think yeah. Mark, my husband, judged y'all at uh, okay. uh, Bates. Okay. I did everything blind in that contest. Okay. Uh, well, you have me in the But anyway, but, but he's he's really into it, so he's like 16, so you know, hopefully he'll carry on the. Well, you know, good, the, good. The, 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 so, so that's, you know, that's the final product, too. Uh, well, I love visual aids. Right, you know? right. Well, I, I got those now. I tell you. But uh, they say you got to ask for the order. So you know, if, you like, if you like the presentation, if you like the haul, then uh, you know, give us a 10 and help us get in the box. So. Thank you so much. The pleasure has been truly all mine. I'm so yeah. glad that you decided to come to Dyer's Park to cook in this contest. I think well, you've been blessed with a little bit nicer weather than I might have believed. 
Did y'all yeah. do uh, anything but last night? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I was the herd dog last night. Okay. You know, I didn't get to taste anything. Yeah, no, really. Uh, never had a good anyone where they did uh, uh, anything but on um, so Oh, I know. That, that kind of, you know, kind of threw me off a little bit. Uh-huh. So, well, but anyway, you uh -huh. know. Well, this is her first contest, and so, you know, she may learn. I'm sure she's learning oh, yeah. from uh, her mistakes and things she might want to do differently, but she might just decide to keep that going. That's what sets our contest apart. That's it. But, uh, well, was, I mean, you know, the mayor, a couple of the private, the nice group that came in, you know, I, I didn't have any problem. They just, yeah. just, I wasn't quite prepared for you know, all the, uh, She really, you know, said they could stop by, but really, I think they wanted, like, a sit down type thing, you know, so we'll look at But anyway. Uh, but they ate it, so I guess yeah, they you know, uh, you know, express that, you know, in your comments, and uh, I, I think this young lady would do anything that she can yeah. to uh, enhance this contest, make it enjoyable for the cooking teams, because uh, without teams, you got no contest. Right, right. right. so, well, they've been, they've been real helpful. I mean, just coming by and checking on this and everything. Mm -hmm. they've, been, they've been real good. Well, wonderful. Well, I right. think my, my time is growing nigh, uh, and... That is an excellent, excellent haul. Yeah, yeah, yes, thank you. Uh, so I wish you the best of luck. And See, thank again, you very much. the pleasure has been all mine. Thank, thank you, you so much. You yard barbecuer? I am. Just kind of amateur and once in a while get your ribs out and <coughs> try it. Yeah. Well, you know, I want to backyard and, and do some uh, grilling out sometimes. Yeah. But you know, I want to tell you about. Hey, buddy, how you doing there? I seen you walking around the event, and I just wondered, uh, are you competing? Do you usually do competition barbecue? No, I'm a backyard griller, uh, actually. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, just, you know, um, what people call barbecue, but actually is just throwing it on the grill in the backyard. That's oh, what I do. Oh, okay, and so I'm, you... I'm, I was looking for, you know, ideas to make my stuff taste better. Taste better. Oh, okay. So you don't really know what you're doing at barbecue. You're just getting into it. And yeah, I want to learn. You want to learn. I want to how to cook in the backyard. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Four is not out, y'all. Are y'all ready? We are ready. All are right. Are ready? Being ready? I said, are you ready? Are you ready? What? For some football or some poor barbecue. <laughs> Wait, I'm ready for some barbecue. All we right. got a quarterback in the back, so whichever one you want today, we're ready to serve you. I'm ready to do it. I'm ready, coach. Send me in. Okay. <laughs> well, we're ready to play. Okay, well, now, the next 15 minutes, you just make me. Barbecue Fest Cooking Contest, first annual. Um, thank you so much for bearing with us. This being our first year, uh, it's a learning experience for many of us. We welcome um, our out-of-town teams who have traveled here from far away, and then we also welcome the teams who have come from down the street. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about tonight, which is anything but porkers judging. Um, what they're gonna do is we've got three judges who are just gonna come on site all together. Now, they could come anytime between 6 and 8 p.m. It's really laid back. If they come by your event site and you're not ready for them, all you gotta do is say, hey, come back. 15, 20 minutes, okay? But let's just hope everybody doesn't do that. Um, so what you'll do is just present, talk about what they're tasting, and then they'll judge, judge you from there. Um, we're hoping to announce the winners for anything but porkers just right after eight o'clock on the stage. And also, if you won first place or second place, first place is $250 in a trophy, and then second place is $150 in a trophy. So if you have any questions about anything but this is Cricket. Where's Kelly? This Kelly and her husband Henry. So we're so glad they're here and bearing with us. And they're gonna lead the show from here and tell you all the specifics and how to go from here. So. Thank you for any, if anybody's just cooking anything, but you know, you know, I stick around now because I'm not gonna tell them anything. Uh, first of all, we're gonna start. Welcome everybody again. Uh, Memphis Barbecue Network welcomes you. Uh, we appreciate y'all participating, and one thing that we're all about is making sure that we promote Memphis-style barbecue and Memphis-style barbecue cooking. So if you've got any questions, there's some teams that have been cooking a long time around here, there's some teams that haven't been cooking very long at all. There's some teams that are nervous about presentation, there's some teams that uh, don't worry about presentation. So. Uh, if you've got questions, you can come find us and we'll point you to a, a long-term team and everybody here is out for the same thing and that's to help everybody else. So 
And I heard somebody say, yeah, don't come talk to me. I like lying about barbecue, so there you go. All right, uh, we're going to start off with a roll call. Uh, if you're here, just let me know. Uh, cable one. Here. Caterpillar Fat Cat. Here. Caterpillar Prentice. Here. Dyersburg Pallet. Here. Lupo's. Here. Saw you on TV last night. Ma and Paul's Hillbilly. Yeah. Paradise Porkers. RJ Young. Here. Red Hot. Yeah. Share Coppers. Here. Sure Shack. Here. Squirrelin to be grilling. Here. The, the meat glazers. Here. Two little pigs. Here. Wild boar. Okay, everybody's here. 100% attendance. Uh, one of the things we're going to do, as I said earlier, some of y'all are new to the presentation, and Tim Bones has grac graciously uh, volunteered to put on a mock presentation after this meeting. So if, we, if anybody wants to, just come up here after the meeting, and we'll go down to Tim Bones, and he's going to put on a mock presentation. I'm sure that some of the other professional teams, the long-term professional teams that are here, come down and help answer any questions because, again, we want to promote what's going on. Okay, uh, we want to, uh, after the meeting, the first time contestants, like I said, we can go down there, but we also have some photos up here that we can show you how to lay out your blind boxes and what other people, some do's and don'ts about laying out your blind boxes. Um, also, we have 17 teams this weekend that are cooking in the professional contest. We've got five hog entries. We've got 11 shoulder entries. And we've got 16 rib entries. So that's, that's a pretty good, no, it's not pretty good. That's a real good first time contest. I think that's excellent. I think that Natalie has done an excellent job because every time I ask her a question, she had the right answer and she had already done it. And last night I thought one more question I had to ask her. And I said, this is the 11th hour question. I asked her this question and she's gonna freak out. And I asked her the question, she said, man, I got that handle, it's in my garage. I said, okay, she's way ahead of the game. Okay, we're talking about on-site judging. All of the judges tomorrow are trained or certified by the MBN network. And if any of y'all are interested in being trained, there's classes and stuff, and, and uh, Natalie and I talked about it, and we talked about we'll probably try to have a class up here next year. But this year is too much going on for, I didn't see her over here. I wasn't trying to compliment her just because she was sitting there. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so there's training classes if you're interested. And any, anybody that's serious about cooking uh, needs to go to a judge's training class because then you find out what the judges are looking for. And we had some questions earlier today when we were rocking around about ribs and what the judges look for and stuff like that. So again, that's what they talk about and you, you really get to judge, you actually judge like you're in a contest at the training class. But I'm not here for the training class, I'm just telling you about it. Okay, the way this works is you've got three judges, uh, one at a time, that come every 20 minutes. Okay, now, We'll talk about it further, but the judges should stay a, around a minimum of 10 minutes and not more than 15 because you need five minutes at least to get ready for your next judge. And so we try to stay on on track. If you've got a judge that's in there staying too long, send somebody to find us and, and we'll take care of it. You know, you don't have to be impolite to the judge. The judges know what they're supposed to be doing and you shouldn't have to worry about it, but if, we'll talk some more about judges in a minute. Uh, when the judges come up, they'll have a, well, they'll have a card that tears in half. And on both halves of the cards, it'll have your team number, your area number, and the time and the judge number on there. So the first thing that you need to do when you welcome that judge is to say, judge number one, Welcome, we're Jim's barbecue team. And then you start. And so you start your 15 minutes time, and right then, 
and do your spiel for them. Uh, you keep your half of the card because not only are the judges judging you, you're judging the judges. We want the representatives and the organizers want the feedback from you as a team if the judge was what you expected. And there's room, there's room on that card to put your comments. Okay, you can be both positive and negative. We want your feedback. All right, 15 minutes is the maximum stay because we need to stay on time. Now, if you've got a problem, judge, you've got a judge that's drunk, uh, don't stop. Send someone to find us and we'll handle it. Don't give him another drink either. Don't give him another drink. <laughs> don't even make him keep drinking. Don't even offer, don't even offer a judge alcohol. Okay? And another thing, just a little tip. Barbecue is finger food. The judge shouldn't ask for a knife and a fork. So you don't have to worry about knives and forks. Alright. Judges should see the whole cuts of meat on the grill. They need to see it on the grill. That's the whole hog, the whole shoulder, and a slab of ribs, depending on which category you're cooking in. Now we understand on hog, when, when your second judge shows up, that hog's going to have a little bit out of it because you've already fed one judge, and they take that into consideration. But when you're doing ribs and shoulders, you have the, rib, the shoulders there presenting for the judges. Okay. Uh, during the on-site and final judging, the team must serve at least portions, and this is of the ham, shoulder, and loin. That's in the whole hog. Any other sections of the whole hog may be served at the team's discretion, provided this can be done within the 15-minute time frame. Judges will be instructed to judge the sample as the team provides. Deducting points if at least portions of the ham, shoulder, and loin are not served. So you five hog teams, you know what you got to show. Ham, shoulder, and loin to the judge. Gifts. Let's talk about gifts. No bribes. Uh, if, you offer, if you offer a gift, please ask the judge to pick it up later. That's what that we instruct the judges to do. Good way to have a judge. That's a good way to have the judge come and give you feedback, and that's that's how you learn as a team. Uh, I used to be on a team, and I was CBS, and I was Chief Bull. Okay, and what we did was we wanted the judges to come back after they left and tell us what was going on, and that's the way you learn. All right, beverages. Again, no alcoholic beverages, please, before or during the judging. All right, here's the scoring criteria. Area and appearance. At the present, it hasn't rained real bad, so the judges look for the area to be neat and clean. Now, if it comes a gully washer tonight or something like that, we'll instruct the judges to judge from the knees up because we've got maybe standing water or whatever. So we'll take care of that as long as your area is picked up and there's not cigarette butts laying around and beer cans and stuff like that. The area and appearance is uh, pretty easy to get through. <coughs> Presentation. Provide all the necessary information. Okay, what is that? You know, you might tell how you got your grill. What kind of wood you cook on. What kind of charcoal you use. What temperature you use. How long have you been cooking this piece of hog or, or your ribs or your shoulders. You know, talk to them and tell them and educate them why they, you've got the best product that you have today. Okay? That's presentation. Appearance of the entry. On the grill. As it's served. Is it appetizing? Uh, I can remember on the team that I cooked with, we had all kinds of arguments about garnishment. Garnishment is not supposed to play into the judge's uh, decision <coughs> on how the appearance looks. Tenderness of entry. Is it tender or is it mushy? And that's some other questions that we've had come up. Uh, the judges, sometimes you'll see them taking the, the meat, doing this with, with the meat just to see if it's mushy or if it's tender. They'll check it and see if it sticks to the top of their mouth. Uh, they'll check to see how stringy it is when you pull it apart or how, how easy it is to pull the ribs apart. Uh, flavor of the entry. That's served with or without sauce. 
If the sauce is offered, the entry must be judged as a combination of the meat and the sauce. Now that's, if the sauce is offered, if you have sauce, not your finishing sauce or rub that you put on them, but sitting there on the table, or if you turn it in with your blind box, the judge has to take that into consideration when they're judging that uh, category. Then there's an overall impression, and that's the general feeling about the whole experience. Uh, it's not an average score of the above scores, and this is what we use as the tiebreaker. Now, 10 is not a perfect score, but it is the best that they've had today. And what we tell the judges are, and the way we inform the judges is that somebody in every category got a 10 today from what they've eaten. It's not perfect, but it's the best they've had today. Does everybody get that? In other words, if you get all tens, you might not have perfect, and you just cook the best ribs you've ever cooked, but they're the best that that judge had today. Now, they might still be the best, and it may be the winners, but still, that's what the tens are. And we start from 10 and go down. We don't start in the middle and go up or down. And we talk to them about uh, Ten if it's the best they've had today, nine if it's swallow if you can swallow it and so forth. And if the meat's on the grill, we go the way we talk to judges to try to keep keep them even. Blind judge, you deliver the sample on the time. The time will be on the top of the box. When you get your blind samples box, there'll be a label on there that tells you when when to turn it in. Now the blind is going to be turned in in the building that you can't see right up here. Uh, I can see one of the buildings, but I can't see the other one. But we'll have an MBN sign up there for y'all to see, and uh, I'll go over the times in a minute. All right, in your sample box, it's a nine inch clamshell, is how we refer to it. Fill the box up with meat. You'll be feeding four to six judges and a couple of reps. Uh, the label stays on the top of the box. That's how we identify when you turn it in. Then we will take the identification off to make it blind and put our different identification on. Uh, put the, make the portions inside the, the blind box in a serving size so it's easier to, uh, for the judges to split up. You don't want a, a six bone rack of ribs unless you've got six of them in there. It's hard to be getting six, six bone racks in a nine inch container. So make it easier on the judges. Don't put single bones in there because one of the judging criteria is how the bones pull apart. And I'm sure that Heath will talk about, you know, whether you put two bones or three bones or whatever. Uh, no varnish or foil inside the blind box. No markings of any kind, just meat. The sauce, if you're doing sauce, we'll provide you a sauce container that goes on the outside. Okay, uh, whole hog says read. The team must place at least portions of the ham, shoulder, and loin into the blind box. Well, that's what we said earlier when you present it. You've got to have all three of those portions. But here's the kicker. No other part of the whole hog is allowed in the blind box. Whereas if they're on site and you want to give them some of that bacon or some other, other part of the hog, you're more than welcome to. But don't put anything in the blind box other than the ham, shoulder, or loin. All teams, y'all got that? Okay. Sauce cups, as I said, will be provided. Do not mark on anything. Uh, the, your sauce cups, you, you'll bring with them. When you turn it in, we'll mark on with a grease pencil. Grease pencil. Yep, got it. See? She got it every time. Uh, if the sauce is sent in, then the meat must be sampled with the sauce, as I said earlier. Uh, with the sauce in the flavor category. If more than one sauce is sent in, judges will be instructed to select the sauce that best complements the meat. If sending a hot or a spicy sauce, when you turn it in, tell the turn-in crew. And they'll mark it so that the judges know in the back that it's a hot sauce. Okay. No marking on the container or special arrangements in the box. Don't put your your ribs in a log cabin 
so that somebody else opens it up and they go, oh, that's the log cabin team, and we can know who they are. So don't mark your uh, entry. Okay, judging time. Here we go. Hog turn in for blind is 9.45 to 10 o'clock up here at the building. Your first on-site judge will be at 10. And then your second on-site judge should be ready to come in at 10.20. And your third should be ready to come in at 10.40. And everything should be all over at 11. <laughs> uh, your shoulder turning in time is at 11 o'clock to 11.15 with your first judge on site at 11.15. Your ribs turning in time is 12.15 with your first judge on site at 12.30. Any questions about those turning in times? <coughs> okay. During that time, uh, the judging committee will be coming around and advising who made the finals in the first category as we start turning out uh, the standings. And so the top three teams will be notified that they made the finals in hog, and the other teams will, will know that they did But we'll, we'll be able to answer the question once the top, the top three teams are notified. And we do the same thing with shoulders and ribs. Finals judging is going to start at approximately 1.30. Okay. So if you made the finals in hall and you're notified, when you're notified that in the finals, you'll be told that your judge should be there at 1.30. And in the finals, they come every 20 minutes. So if you are if you are uh, the second team, we'll tell you that you're the second team and your judge will be there at 1.50. So you'll be notified. You'll get a paper. You'll get a sheet of paper that tells you who's the top three and when they're coming. And exactly when that judge should be there. And then when we get to the shoulders, you'll see the shoulders. And when you get to the ribs, you'll see the ribs. Uh, as, yeah, teams will receive a few print. I didn't get to number two. Uh, you will be kept posted of any changes. If there's a slowdown, one of the judges has a flat tire or something like that. There'll be four on-site judges, and they'll arrive at the same time, which is different than, all of, than your preliminary judging. The same criteria as the preliminary. They will rank each entry and each criteria using decimal points and scoring. So, what we're saying is, is when you go, when we start finals, all the scoring's erased if you made the top three, so everybody's starting out equal. And if you're cooking a whole hog, it doesn't count more than somebody cooking ribs. We've had ribs ran in a contest. You know, so it's not it's not like well they're cooking hogs they're gonna win. That's not it. It's, it's who's the best of any category is the grand. Uh, be considerate of your neighbors. I'm pointing I'm just pointing at y'all because you asked the question about the quiet time. No loud music or noise during the judging. You heard about us? No. <laughs> we saw the video. Oh. If you got if anybody's gonna drop any category that you're cooking in, and I've seen it. We had a big party on Friday night, and the team couldn't get up and finish their cooking on Saturday, so they had to drop. Please let us know if you're dropping. Please let us know if you're dropping. Um, that's that's basically what I've got. I want you to have, you know, I wish you all all good luck, and we definitely want you to have fun. Um, the official time, and you'll see us coming around with these clocks, but if you want to set your watch, the official time is 3.26. That's important because, what is it, what is it? 10 to 10? 9.45 to 10. 10.01, 10 in one second. If you're not in line, you're not in blind. Now, we're going to, we're going to, uh, I'll answer some questions and I'm going to turn it over to the, are there any questions right now? <coughs> uh, when it gets to the, 10 o'clock point. Are you going to lay the clock down or are you just going to look and say? We shut the door. Oh, you shut the door. So we'll, when. We'll, we'll lay the clock down when it gets shut. Well, we do both. Okay, so when the door actually touches the shut part, then it's then it's too right, late. If you're, if you're walking up and you see that door closing, you got a, you got a problem. You're too late. Okay. 
Yeah, don't get your arm Just in throw your food. <laughs> That's what you do. Uh, okay. Just throw your food. Shoulder blinds are 11. So how much time prior to that? Uh, uh, shoulder blinds at 11. He goes from 11 to 11.15. Okay, you got a 15 minute window. You got a 15 minute window when you start. When you on 9 45, 11, and 12.15. And then after that, you got the 15 minute window to get up there. And I've seen it, a lot of teams wait for the last minute because they want to bring their hot meat and everybody's running up there and once they got trips because he's running, the food flies out or whatever. But you gotta you gotta be in that door. Uh, any other questions? Kelly, you wanna Cameron? The MBN is a is a group of individuals. None of us are paid. This thing is what monies are brought in by judges' fees or organizers' sanctioning fees and team, uh, team membership fees we put in to different things where we can promote the MBN, try to get more contests, we try to get advertising out. None of this goes into anybody making any money. It's a pretty expensive hobby and we have some really good dedicated volunteers that uh, have done, done a tremendous job in the last four or five years. With that being said, if you're not an MBN member team, I encourage you to join. It's $20 a year to be an MBN member team. Your name gets on our website. We put a link. If you've got your own website or your sponsor has a website, we'll put that link on it. So that for 20 bucks, they get more exposure on the web. And it's only 20 bucks a year, like I say, and the money ends up coming back in the form of advertising or uh, exposure. And we have we have a couple more events. I mean, it's, this is about the halfway point of the season. We have more events coming up. Um, Kelly's going to talk about some of the events coming up. We have some actually some fairly high dollar prize money contests, and that's one of the things we've worked for in the last few years. Is we know especially it's a hobby for us. It's a hobby for a lot of you. But this is is the most expensive hobby in time and money to be the cook on this barbecue circuit. You can go cook other barbecue circuits and it's not a lot. But most of the NBN teams, if you're gonna cook one or two categories, you're a thousand dollars in the hole before you leave your driveway. And uh, there's, no, there's chances, I mean, it's just like, to me it's more like the PGA golf course. You either place to make a little bit or just hang it up to go home and try again the next week. And it's expensive to do that. But we try by certifying judges and training judges and getting your feedback from the judges to try to keep a, a level playing field whether we're having a contest in, in Dyersburg, Tennessee or in a week or two weeks in Haverhill, uh, New Hampshire will be the, the next contest. So we try to keep it nationwide and it also promotes this type of uh, type of contest. As far as I know, we are the only barbecue sanctioning body that sanctions on-site judging. Where you get a chance to sell your barbecue as the best that day to a judge is sitting across the table from you. It's not just a judge sitting at a table going, yeah, this is good and this is not. You get a chance to tell people what it's about and what kind of wood that you use, what temperature, how long. And that's some of the things you want to make sure you get out to the judges too when you're talking to them. Paul Barbecue. Hey, we're out here with Mom Paul Barbecue, and it looks like the typhoon's getting ready to come through, and that's just part of barbecue competition, isn't it? That's it. <laughs> and uh, CF Sour uh, has come on with Barbecue Superstars, and we've got a bunch of new samples, and we just want you to love, let you know, Mom Paul. Go ahead. I think we use all this stuff. <laughs> okay, we got uh, paprika, paprika, and we got garlic powder, and then we got onion powder. We try to get the base, uh, some of the base items you need for a, a rub. And uh, one thing about paprika, they sent us the case. We didn't even open it. You could smell it. We opened the case, and boy, it just hit me in the face. All them flavors and aromas. If you're having trouble with your rub and your competition barbecue, try sours. 
Give Sours a chance, and are you going to try it out? Yeah, we will try it. Okay. We try a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> we really do. All right. Well, this is Daryl saying we love CF Sours with Mom and Pa's Hillbilly Barbecue.